Welcome back to the Daily Grind. Today we got a big bonus room. Uh, it's a pretty nice carpet. I guess it's a little thin patterned carpet that we're gonna be putting in this room up here. And I tell you what, I just walked in this place and you gotta love builders like this. Check this out. So looky here, this place is clean. You can even see, I don't know if you can see a bit of cleanness around the edges there. They even took and vacuumed around the edges. Certainly love it when the builders clean up like that and get all ready for you. This is probably somebody's custom home instead of uh, instead of just a traditional builder because I don't know any builders in this area that cleans up like this. You can see definitely where they went around the edges with the vacuum and sucked out stuff from around the baseboard. Check it in here. It's really evident in here. That's exactly what that's from because I do that all the time myself. And that's exactly what it looks like whenever you vacuum around the edges. So, this big bonus room here, there's about 100 yards in this, in this bonus room. So, we got this right here and another room off the end of the bonus room. So, that's what I'm going to be working on uh, today and probably tomorrow as well. This won't be, we won't be doing anything in there, obviously. And we've got these steps right here to do as well. Um, my man, Luke, is out of town for the rest of the week, so I'm by myself. But none of these cuts are huge that's going up there. We're gonna run it crossways. Look at this, man. I just love the cleanliness of a job like this. But this is a new construction, a brand new build. And look how clean and organized it is. You can tell me, you know, he's using that to scoop up garbage and stuff. But look at this, man. We're gonna come out here, get some tack strip, get our pad in, all that good stuff. And we are fixing to go to town. We're gonna get to work, son. Let's get to work. Oakley Doakley, we got this house now tack stripped and padded, as you can see there. I wanna point out a couple things right here, though. Um, let me turn around to show you guys what I'm talking so about. You will notice that I taped all of the pad seams. There is so much discussion about that online, and I just want to put out there, I've put it out there before, but people always tend to argue with it and say, well, I've never seen that, or I've never seen that, or blah, 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 that's ridiculous. So, I'm going to put it out there again anyway. The right way to do that, now, I'm going to point this out first. I did this because it has a moisture barrier on the back, okay? Um... I don't know if these people have animals or whatever the deal is, but that's why I taped these seams. Traditionally, technically, you do not want to tape any pad seams, okay? That's an absolute no-no if you've never seen it. Um, I've witnessed it myself numerous amount of times. I actually talked about this in Tucson before I had any training classes or anything. And uh, once I went to the classes, it just pretty much verified what I already knew, but it was like, yeah, it was like a backup. I had backup. Now, uh, an organization's actually proven that or standing behind that, rather. So, anyway, whenever you tape your seams, if the carpet is going to be down for uh, any amount of time, 10 years or something like that, your pad is going to break down uh, on each side of that tape. Let me just... It's going, to, it's going to break down on each side of the tape, and the part that has tape on it is going to be protected from the backing of the carpet. So, therefore, it's not going to break down as bad. I have literally walked into people's houses in Tucson. I got videos on it, as a matter of fact, um, um, and seen humps in the carpet all the way across the room, and I'm like, oh, wow, there's a seam right there. Pulled it up. There was not even a carpet seam. It was actually a pad seam that had tape on it. That pad was still nice and fat and fluffy where all the rest of the tape was wore down. And I come to the conclusion that that was from the backing of the carpet. It's breaking the pad down. That's exactly the case. That's exactly what goes on here. So um, never want to tape, never want to tape your pad seams unless it's a moisture barrier tape, okay? If you're using a, if you're, doing rental properties or something like that where the carpet's not going to be down any amount of time you know uh for the next tenants or a couple years for three or four or five years maybe 
go for it. It ain't going to be no big deal. But if you are uh, putting it in a client's house that's going to, that they're living there, they're going to be there for a long time. They're hoping the carpet's going to be there for a long time. Don't take the seams, okay? Because I promise in eight, nine, ten years, whatever, something like that, you're going to start to see the difference in the pad breaking down and the pad not breaking down where you taped the where you take the pad seams, okay? So that's that's the reason, that's the, the reason why we tape it right here. Why we tape it right here on the edge of the step because the carpet packing will, this tape will protect this pad from the carpet backing, okay? Now, I've not seen or tested the theory on a carpet pad that already has a plastic on it. Somebody actually brought that to my attention. That's definitely something to consider because just like the tape protects it from the backing, well, this plastic just may be thick enough to protect the pad as well from the carpet backing. So it, it very well may do the same thing and it may not matter. I can't say yes or no. I do know on foam pads and rebond pad, stuff without a plastic on it like this, the carpet backing will break it down. So there's new products out now. Also, Shaw has a product with plastic on the back of the carpet. So is that going to be a difference? Is soft back going to be a difference? All that stuff with the soft backing and the plastic backing on the back, it may not even do it. I do know for a fact, traditional action back will break down rebond pad if it don't have a plastic on the pad, I promise. I've seen it so much, so much. So staple your seams, unless you have moisture barrier, just to be safe, okay? There's no sense in, in taping it. Anyway, if you're on concrete, use pad glue. Duct tape's expensive. This stuff's like 10 bucks a roll. So you use a roll of tape. If you could use uh, the pad glue will be, uh, a lot more cost efficient and it's super easier to do. It's a lot easier to use pad glue than it is to duct tape all these seams. So let's just staple the pad seams unless it's a moisture barrier pad, okay? Anyway, more talk about this pad. What do you guys think about it? I deal with this stuff a lot. The carpet store I get work from sells it a lot and I do not like it a bit. Yesterday I had to take, let me turn it so Yesterday I had to take and cut about two feet out of the roll all the way up like that on that job that I did to get rid of defective pad where it just went from the regular uh, 7 16 down to maybe an eighth inch. It just faded out, it was garbage. There is always inconsistency in this pad, whether it be thick, thin, soft, or hard. There's consistency all over. I've had it where you step on a seam like this right here, and it feels like it, uh, it's like there is pad and then there ain't pad because the difference is so dramatic from the density of one pad as it is another. And this is another reason right here. Looky here. I do not like that. That is so much. That is so much on this kind of pad. It's unbelievable. And it's just not, just not a little bit here and a little bit there. Look at here. This one ain't as bad as that one over there, but it's almost every single roll that you get up next to the edges, the pad, The plastic is just coming off the pad and then you get that awful sound. Just like so, man. That's just, I do not like it at all. Over here it's the same way. See all that? It's just all loose. The plastic is all loose on the pad. This would probably be a decent pad if, right, it would be. Because when you got some, some of the good of this, it's actually a decent pad. But uh, when you get the plastic coming loose and you get the inconsistency in the pad, it's just, it just makes it overall garbage. Look at this edge. 
Uh, look at that. Half the time, all these little strings of plastic are stuck to the daggone plastic that's wrapped around the entire roll. So you literally gotta take your knife and cut the plastic off the end of the roll. Let me see. I got a couple rolls right here left. So whenever they uh, shrink it on here or whatever, look at here. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You see that right there? So this pad, the plastic on this roll is melted to the pad because they got all this excess plastic sticking out the edge of the roll there. So now all this plastic is melted to the daggone roll of pad. Anyway, we are having some beautiful weather here in Tennessee for a change. It's about two o'clock. I am fixing to call it a day. I don't want to, I don't even want to go cut the carpet around a tack strip. I was going to get the steps tack stripped, but I don't have anything with me but some tri tack. And I definitely don't want to use tri tack on the steps. It's going to be sticking out too far from the edge. People's going to be stepping on it and so on and so on. So I just want to talk to you for just a second. So, uh, get me a coffee. Um, I've been to the NFIC. Okay, you guys know that. I'm certified there. Certified here in CFI. Four le five levels of CFI. Residential one and two. Com uh, commercial carpet one and two. And also laminate hardwood and vinyl plank in CFI. And the uh, natural fibers. I'm certified in that. I'm not saying all that to brag. I'm saying all that. You guys invest in yourself, okay? I took, check this out. I took the book that NFIC gives you a study guide. And I had a buddy of mine that's not flooring related at all. You don't know anything about flooring. Uh, but I had him take and put it on audio for me. I had him read it, record it. Now I got it. I can listen to that just like I did all day today. I listened to it while I was working. And even though I've already took the class and done all the other certifications and stuff like that, I am absolutely amazed at how much information is just in that book. If you guys want to know some stuff, I would highly, highly, highly recommend going to NFIC, okay? It ain't even just for the certification, okay? That is a training and a certification. So you're not just going to go there and take a test and get certified. They're going to teach you they're going to teach you so much. It's going to blow your mind, I promise. <laughs> I'm just amazed at how much information is out there that's still to be known. And it's always going to be like that because the uh, the industry is always changing. It's ever growing, ever uh, getting better. Some people might say it's getting worse, but I think it's getting better. There is a nice group of people out there trying to do better trying to make the industry better trying to raise the standards and stuff like that so you guys jump on board okay let's let's do this let's make this industry better we can do that by bettering ourselves okay i'm fixing to load my fat self up and go to the house thank you guys for tuning in to the daily grind until tomorrow fbsb's out